there in Hayward Talking Land. It's uh, Scotty D. Got my friends here, Bob and Derek. Bob is watching Betty Boop. What a, what is happening? I've just got some random stuff going on in the I background. I see that. Anyway, welcome to Hey We're Talking. Uh, if you hear a little bit of a, a it's, it's almost like a tiny, tiny, not full bark. This is my dog, Gordy. He's in the room with me. I tried to give him the freedom to be a part of the show, and he's ruining it. He's talking. Be quiet, Gordy. But anyway, that's what we do here. Yeah, that is that's true. We have birds and well, Derek has birds and he has dogs usually. Not all the time. Hey, my dog was on the show last week. Y'all just didn't know. No, I saw quiet. him. I saw him. I saw him though, but I didn't hear him. Anyway, my 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 pets are not on the show. Typically, I get a random person at the door, which is just that way. And, and sometimes he, I get delivered face, pizza. If you've watched the show, his face, he'll always be like. Like, what are you coming in here for right now? I'm recording. Yeah, he gets really. Yeah, my my wide eyed face, like, yeah, means hey, I'm recording. That yeah. that's really what it means. It's like a language. You we, need to I get one of those with. things that says recording outside the door. Well, I have a light outside my door but that I, is red, but they don't care. But I, I forget to turn it on. <laughs> well, when, it when rage, when when we had rage on the show last week, my dog was in here. And he was very silent, but he did poop in the floor. He did poop. <laughs> wow. Did poop. So Derek did like uh, at least a half hour of that show smelling dog poop. I mean, it was, but you said it wasn't was, really wet, so that's good. It was a very nah, it was, form. It, it was towards the end of the show because he was. He was like, dude, I, I, would, I, I really would. need to go out. And you just left me here. So here's what you get. Here's a little present. Well, I'm thinking about it. I just want to say hello to Paige. Just. I don't know. Nope. Hello. Paige won't. Paige won't show up in the actual show. We'll see her, but Paige okay. is there. Uh, speaking of Paige, I bet she she's really into video games, and uh, we're gonna tell her about a really special thing we have going here. See how I did that? That transition was flawless. We have a sponsor. I think I win the Segway Wars, but you go ahead. You go ahead. We have a sponsor on this show by the name of GameFly. And Gamefly, as you know, if you listen to this show, is giving us the opportunity to give you a special deal. Uh, you get 30 days free of Gamefly. And what Gamefly is, is exactly what it sounds like. They're going to fly games to you. Well, unless you live close by where they can just drive them in the truck. They're eventually going to go in a truck into the U.S. mail truck and be delivered to your mailbox. Is what it boils down to. But they've got the new stuff. They got the old stuff. They got games for every system known to man at Gamefly. And they want to give you 30 free days because they love Hey We're Talking so much. So what you do is go to GameflyOffer.com forward slash HWT. I now, every time I think about forward slash, I'm going to think these guys are going to give me crap about saying forward slash. Anyway. You just say slash. But just it's GameflyOffer.com. Slash I can't. Forward slash HWT. You get 30 days free trial of Gamefly. You get one game uh, that you can turn in anytime you want. You could play that game for one day, send it back, and you hope that the post office, oh, that's the problem. you got to depend on the post office. Don't get me started on that. But you send that game back, and then when they get it, they send you a new game, and so on and so forth. So you could get a, you could get quite a few games going if you just decided to play them for like maybe one or two games during that month. Oh, yeah. Or you just rent two at a time and you could stagger them. That's true. You could go with the two at a time plan. But the free 30-day trial is a one at a time plan. So if you know for sure you're going to go for it, then go for it. But Yeah, just you know what? Just try the trial. Yeah. It's, it's 30 days. If you don't like it, cancel it. You Game, won't be charged anything. That's true. That's Gamefly it offer. Trial. Gamefly you're offer. trying it. Ga- Derek, this is the money line here. Gameflyoffer.com. Slash HWT. Oh, that hurt. It felt uncomfortable. Just just be careful if you're using Gamefly that your crazy neighbors or that crazy person next door doesn't grab your your uh, your game. What? Dude, oh, yeah. I was wondering how that, he was going to end that grab. That kind, that stuff kind of was that your transition you know, into done. the topic that your crazy yeah, that neighbor's going to steal your game. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of crazy neighbors, Scott. Oh my gosh. You like that? Listen. <laughs> I have the crazy neighbor of all time, just the best stories of my life come from, and if he's listening, he's like a totally different man now, but back in the day, he was quite a little pill, as my mom used to call people. What, Robert, what exactly does that mean? Hey, Becky. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, this is so great. Uh, Hi, Scott's mom. Robert Coleman <clears throat> lived on my street. He was older oh, than me. Oh, the founder of Coleman. Uh, no, you know, no. Grills and nope. the lantern. The lanterns are and... not at all. No, oh. not even close. Um, the first person I met when we moved there when I was seven years old to our house was Robert Coleman. And what he did was he took me, he was about, uh, I'd say he was four or five years older than me. Big, tall, lanky dude. I'm seven years old. He was like, he came to our house and knocked on the door. Hi, I'm uh, Robert Coleman. I live down the street. I just saw that you moved in and I wanted to meet your son. I wanted to show him around the neighborhood. So they were like, back in those days, nobody was like, make sure you have your cell phone and don't go far down the street. You just, you let your kid do anything back uh, then. Scotty, come come home when the street lights come on, <laughs> exactly. okay? Exactly. So Robert Coleman takes me uh, and we lived on uh, this street that was by a creek, which was, it, 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 was ca- it was part of the Rouge River runoff, basically, in Detroit area. And so he took me back by this creek, and I'm seven, okay? Just picture this in your mind. I'm seven years old. We're walking through this creek, and he's taking me through all these different things. And and I'm having a great time because it's almost, it's really woodsy. You're by the water, going through all this stuff. We go, and we keep going farther and farther out. And eventually, and now that I'm older, I know that this was not that far away, but I'm seven, okay? Seven. We get to Interstate 94 in Detroit, okay? This huge road, and there's this big, uh, if you've ever been to Detroit, 94 in Southfield area, there is a huge tire, the Uniroyal tire. Uh, It used to be a Ferris wheel way back in the day, but now it's just this giant tire, okay? So we get to this giant tire, and he goes, he goes, see you later, kid. And he leaves me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm completely unaware of where I am, the my surroundings. I'm completely lost. So I just wander up the, the creek. And, uh, you know, at one point I just lost all hope. And I started, oh, God. <laughs> and I was crying loud enough that some neighbor down the street heard me. And they said, What's happening? And I was like, I'm lost. I don't know where my house is. We just moved here. I'm lost. And she was like, oh, you mean it must be those people down the street. And she took me home. So that was my first experience with Robert Coleman. And they just got worse from there. I mean, this kid. Robert's kind of a jerk. He was the devil when he was a kid. Now, I've heard he's cleaned his life up and he's a nice guy now. But he was so mean. He had his family was messed up dude there was a lot of problems see you later kid yeah he totally left me there it was horrible he used to throw eggs at our house all the time he egged our house all the time my dad literally one day he egged our front door in the middle of the day my dad was (laughs) opening the front door as he's egging it and he starts running my dad takes off running after him Gets to his front door. The kid gets in the house before my dad gets to the door, shuts the door. My dad pounds on the door. The mom comes to the door. My dad says, hey, your kid's throwing eggs at my house. She goes, hold on a minute. She goes inside the house. She comes back out and she goes, I counted all my eggs. They're still here. (laughs) My dad goes, what? You know, and of course, he's trying not to say anything bad because, you know, we were Christians and we had to be nice gentle people but he still he wanted to kick that kid's butt oh my gosh i got a million more of these i could go on forever but i'm gonna let you guys tell your crazy neighbor stories because i could the robert coleman ones we could talk for hours that's how i got one of my nicknames as a kid was because of robert coleman what was your nickname as a kid i can't believe i can't believe i'm gonna reveal this on the air so you guys have heard me talk about beaver before beaver burger (laughs) Greg Greg yes. Berg, Greg Berger. Okay, his nickname was Beaver because when he was a kid, he had a rope hammock and he chewed through it when he was a baby. Okay, so that's they called weird. him Beaver. All right. Anyway, that's that's the that could be folklore for all I know. But one time, I never learned my lesson with Robert Coleman, and he would be nice to me, and then I would be like, "Oh, he wants to be friends now." So 
uh, Robert Coleman is like, for some reason, he kept climbing up on the roof of his house. So he invited me to climb up on the roof of his house. And I'm probably like, I don't know, I'm like, th- at this time, I'm nine or 10 years old. Okay. So he's in adolescence. And <clears throat> we get up on top of the house, and Robert Coleman proceeds to drop his drawers. And um, how do you say this kindly? Your name? He's playing with his tallywhacker a little bit. Oh. Okay. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I leave and uh, I go and hang out with Beaver and I'm telling his mom and them about this story of what Robert Coleman did. So his dad, who is a doctor, is sitting in the back room smoking a cigar, listening to me tell this story. And he used to give people nicknames and he goes, Fiddler on the Roof. So he called me Fiddler for the rest of my life, even though I wasn't the one who was fiddling with his winky. It was Robert Coleman, but they called me the Fiddler. So that was my nickname all through <laughs> all the time I lived at home. I was called the Fiddler. Well, that's so better than being the Diddler. <laughs> see you later, kid. <laughs> see you later, kid. Yeah. All right. So, see, I could you, keep Derek? telling these forever, but tell one of yours. That, yeah. How about, yeah, how about someone else, Scott? Sorry, you asked to... me. You guys asked hey, me my you, nickname. You get, you're the one that got on to me for, like, letting – running these stories long but now the tables have turned all right i have two stories i have just two stories and, I, and these these go back to my early early childhood when i lived in houston texas i was probably four or five or six because i haven't four had too many five crazy neighbors living in in, Le- in west texas uh in our home on gracia street in houston texas our very next door neighbor had a race car Whoa. that he liked to rev up like late at night and I say late at night it was after my bedtime but my room <laughs> was right next to his drive it was like right there we, yeah we were, you know my, my room faced his house and so he'd get out there and like turn on the car and rrr, rrr, and scared the bejesus out of me like it was terrifying for like a four-year-old it's right. terrifying and my parents would go over there like what are you doing stop it and he's like oh sorry yeah they said he was a nice guy, but kind of... But he sure loved to scare you with his car, vroom, vroom. Kind of dumb. So, anyway, the the other story, and this will be my story for the whole show. Um, I remember when I was... Just a few years ago, I was over at my parents' house, and we were talking about, like, recurring nightmares that we had as children, and I, I told my parents, I was like, I had this nightmare as a kid that there were some tigers across the street and we were you know, like when i was <laughs> I said i had this nightmare that across the street from our house were these tigers in the backyard that you can see through the fence and my parents go that wasn't a dream that was real we had neighbors a couple uh, a couple of ladies who lived across the street wow. from us actually had a tiger in their backyard <laughs> Because this is Texas, oh and it's legal gosh. to do that. And I'm like, that was real. And they're like, yeah, they had it. They had this tiger for a few months. I was like, oh my god, how did? It was like a chain link fit, like not yay, t- you know, not. It very could long. get out. I I don't recall it ever getting out. Tigers can jump, could. dude. But I I saw this. I mean, my. <laughs> My toddler brain, my Just memory, it was a nightmare. turned it, you know, my, my retroactive memory made it a dream, you know, yeah. where it was like, oh, there, there was a tiger, because you, you, know, you can't possibly believe that that was real, so I was just like, ah, must have been a dream, must have been a nightmare. Nope. Nope. <laughs> that was like, real. Oh, yeah, that, that was real. Uh, yeah, oh, my gosh. actually gosh. did see a tiger. Bob, see you later, kid. Bob, did you have a lion across the street from you? No, but uh, in one of the towns over, somebody did have a full-grown lion in their front yard. How is that even possible? Well, we have a wolf lodge out here, too. Like where, there's, wolf, where there's real wolves? Yeah, like this guy owns, you know, 15, 20 acres, something like that, and there's wolves all over his property. They're all fenced in, you know, to where they can't get out. So there's a, a legitimate, like, 
Wolf Lodge, not far from from where I live, about twenty minutes or so. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's so, your yeah, crazy neighbor. No. You asked me a question. I, I know. Up, I was I'll trying to lead into that. you giving a story. So you went all as serious. Far as, as far as crazy neighbors, one of the ones that stands out the most is when I was, I'm not sure exactly when it was, uh, I lived in this specific house between kindergarten and fifth grade. And there was a family down the road, and kind of much like one of De- Derek's neighbors, they always had loud cars and you know, there's always a bunch of people around and, and all of that stuff. And it seemed like every weekend they would have a fight. Well, I had a crush on the guy's daughter. Um, so I would try to speak with her. And every time I spoke with her, this guy would just freak out. I wasn't a bad kid or anything. It was just the fact that he didn't want anyone speaking to his daughter. Um, and I just remember a lot of times where uh, I would go to bed or go inside when the street lights came on because that was the rule back then. And there would be, like, cars all in front of their house, on their lawn, uh, in their driveway. And they would all literally just be revving the motors and, you know, talking about cars and whatever. Um, And then I always remember them fighting before I actually went to bed um, because my room was on that side of the house closest to, to where they lived. And they would always be fighting. And then I'd wake up in the morning and they'd still be out there fighting. And it's like, I don't know what they're talking about, fighting about, whatever, but they were just always there. Um, And then now I have, I do have a couple crazy neighbors now. Um, I've got one guy that's about four or five houses down from me. Uh, He always just seems like he's yelling. He yells at his kids all the time. He's yelling at everybody. He's another car guy, so maybe it's something to do with the cars or something, but he's always got weird random cars in his driveway. Him and his kids fly down this street, you know, speed limit's 25 in a residential area, thanks to me, because I went to the city council and got it removed or, uh, d- from 30 miles an hour to 25. So thank you, wow. me. Wow, talking politics on the show. What's wrong with I you? I know, that was, that, that was cool, going in front of the city council, expressing to is them the Is the guy on your street, it, is his name Vin? No. Vin Diesel? No, if it was, I'd go talk to him. And and would you you don't like, express yourself, you express yourself. You express yeah. yourself. <laughs> so that's really it. I mean, I, uh, I I did have a crazy neighbor behind us one time that they would always yell just when us kids were outside, and they eventually poisoned our dog and killed him. What? Wow. Yeah. I'm Jeez. having cough attacks over here. That's why I keep muting my microphone. Sorry. Yeah, our, our dog, Bear, was killed by the person that lived behind us. What um, in so the heck? just cause they were crazy. I don't, I have no clue if the dog barked, you know, they would, they would have a problem If us kids were playing in the backyard. They'd be screaming at us. Um, that is when you play a, in backyards, it's, you gotta be. Yeah. That is a sad note, but, but we did finish up the lions, tigers and bears. Oh my. Thing. Oh, most of my dog's yeah. name was bear. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Woo. Woo. On All that right. note. <laughs> let's cl- let's close her down. What a Monday show, everybody. Make sure you visit our sponsor, GameFlyOffer.com slash HWT. It sounds better now. I like it. No more forward slash. GameFlyOffer.com forward slash HWT. And uh, as we've said before, this is something that I think you should take advantage of. If you are even interested in playing video games, trust me when I tell you this is the way to go. I've purchased a lot of my video games, and yes, I'm an old man, and I do play video games sometimes. Uh, but it gets expensive. I mean, they're at least 60 bucks each video game now. And and on top of that, if you buy the ones like you know directly from PlayStation and get it online and download it, and it takes up all this space, and it's just it's a big pain in the butt. And not only that, you can end up buying these like huge you know deluxe copies and all this kind of stuff by the time you're done you're spending a hundred bucks on a video game stupid that you may not like so here's a great way to try out a bunch of video games play your favorites play new ones that you've never played before uh gamefly has all the newest titles they've got it for xbox all the different xboxes ps4 ps3 all these things they've got it all nintendo wii all these things they got them all and uh, you, you'll have no trouble finding a game to play 
at Gamefly. Just go, just go to it. Yeah, do just it. Just go to it. Review us on, on uh, iTunes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Throw some comments down below. Email us Facebook. at heywertalking at gmail.com. Visit us on Facebook. Share our page and our posts on Facebook. Twitter. I'm on Twitter uh, at Bob's Talking. Scott's on Twitter. Scott at is Scott's talking. talking. Scott, Scott is. is talking. Yeah. Hey, we're talking's on Twitter. Follow us there. Share our tweets. Derek's Retweet everything. Instagram. All yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Derek Check is on our... Instagram and he's on YouTube. He's a YouTube sensation. Derek J. Tant. I mean, that's it. You guys know. You've heard yeah. it plenty of times. Yes. Check us out on Instagram. Go to our kids' football games and no. band practices. No. Come to our house. Eat I've got to sell us. candy bars for my kid no. to, to raise 150 bucks. So oh my, my daughter's got a GoFundMe going. Come on, so, guys. Seriously. Let's be serious. This show is very serious. Well, my, my daughter does have a, a GoFundMe going. Talk to, so get, she, talk to Derek after the show. See if he can get you on his YouTube channel. You could sponsor maybe. his show to get money for your daughter. Ooh, I could. It's <clears throat> a great idea. All right. Thanks for listening. On Wednesday, we are going to be talking about uh, some more childhood kind of stuff, some crazy childhood adventures. This That Betty Boop thing is really bothering me. I don't know why. Um, so tune in on Wednesday. We'll see you then. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.